Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and I'm kind of late to this discussion, but I do want to quickly summarize every single new piece of info on Security Breach that we got the other week in NVIDIA's conference with Steel Wool. Because even though Steel Wool and Scott specifically said we're not getting anything new, well, we kind of did. We got a new point of view of an area which, granted, we have already seen before, but hey, I'll take a new POV anytime. New content is still technically new content. We got looks at some of the areas with RTX on and RTX off, which is very interesting to look at. And then also, Steerwall answered a lot of questions that the community had. So like I said, I've gathered every single piece of info and I'm going to present it all to you in this singular video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. Even if you are subscribed, take like two seconds, double check because sometimes YouTube, get this, will unsubscribe you to channels which you've already subscribed to. It's really Dumb. but for some reason it happened so again please just double check make sure you're subbed also hit the like button while you're down there and now let's hop into it first up i got two small topics i want to touch upon before we hop into the brand new area we'll go deeper into this later on but all you need to know right now is that there is a day and night cycle in the game and steel will reveal that when the building is dark sometimes the lighting of the rtx makes the building seem way too bright when it's supposed to be dark, you know, during the nighttime, and they're currently trying to fix that situation by adjusting the shadows and stuff like that. And also bathrooms were revealed during the conference. It was kind of a weird moment, but yes, there is indeed a bathroom in this complex, and apparently one stall has like a big light in it that brights up the entire bathroom. So there you go, toilets are going to be in security breach. Alright, so now let's move over to the new perspective we got of the main entrance area, the lobby. So this is the brand new perspective, and currently you're looking at it with RTX on. Like I said, it's not a brand new area, but it is a brand new perspective on the area. You can see deeper into the Glamrock Gifts area, in fact, if you look closely, you can even see the caterpillar toy from FNAF 4. So there's some more evidence of objects from past games, past events on the timeline, coming to and appearing in this brand new mall later on, very late in the timeline. We've seen it with Mr. Cupcake, right? Now we're seeing it with the Caterpillar from FNAF 4. So there's a lot of evidence of Fazbear Entertainment collecting artifacts of the past and putting them into this brand new Mega Pizza Plex, you know, museum type area. And this is the area with RTX off. As you can see, it's a lot more bright mainly because the lighting doesn't really bounce off anything, so it's just kind of there. And you can also see slight drops in details, right? I think a good place to look is on the palm trees, and on the Freddy statue, and also in the Glamrock Gifts uh, area itself. So that's the new perspective of the lobby, now let's hop into the RTX on and off of different areas. So I took these from Darko's video, but as you can see, this is L Chip's restaurant with RTX off, and then RTX on. I will say that I'm very shocked that it looks so good still with RTX off. Of course, it looks better with it on, but I'm just, I'm shocked that it still looks this good with RTX turned off. So that is a huge relief. And then we move on to the ice cream area, RTX off, and then RTX on. Again, it's crazy how good it still looks with RTX off. I think notable changes are the balloons and also take a look at some of the chairs and then also the ceiling, how the, uh, the pink rod right there of light doesn't bounce off of the ceiling anymore. And now I'm going to move on to the Q&A part of the conference. We got a lot of new details here, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's hop into it. First off, let's go back in time to help Wanted, specifically Princess Quest. Someone asked here, well, can we expect an update to Princess Quest minigame in Help Wanted Mobile? There was a locked door that couldn't be opened in some unused assets. Andrew Dayton, who if you don't know is the CEO and I believe founder of Steel Wool replied with, maybe. So I think it's pretty safe to say, either before the release of Security Breach to tease it up more, or maybe after SB's release where they want to go in and add more detail to Princess Quest, I'm sure we're gonna get an update to it. I mean, think about it. If we weren't going to get one, if they weren't thinking about it, they would have just said no. But instead, Andrew said maybe. Now, of course, they could change their mind over time, but I don't know. Again, there was that locked door and a lot of unused assets, so that would explain, you know, Act 2 of the minigame. Someone else brought up Help Wanted, saying, will there be something similar to the scrapped Showtime feature from Help Wanted? In Security Breach. Andrew Dayton replied with Showtime, never heard of it. So I really don't know what to think here. 
Um, I don't see how Showtime would be implemented into Security Breach. At least the Showtime that we know of from Help Wanted. I think, if anything, we'll get a performance uh, from the Glamrock animatronics. Kind of like what we saw in the first teaser on ScottGames.com where they're on the stage performing. I hope that we can see something like that. Because Steerwall knows that the community was really hyped up for the Showtime and Help Wanted, and they even said that maybe they'd go back to it, but... No, it wasn't in the game. They never went back to it, but they kept the button. So, I don't know. I hope that we can see a showtime in Security Breach. So this is what I'm talking about. I can't tell if you guys meant there will be a day-night cycles, or did you mean the lighting for them? Andrew says, without discussing any game-specific mechanics, which lets you know, okay, so the day and night cycle definitely has some role in the mechanics of the game. Presumably either with the aggression of the characters or just the sun and moon animatronic, which we will talk about later. A lot of the locations have two lighting scenarios. A lot. So not all of them. I don't know, maybe Andrew means all the locations, but just by the word a lot, that does not mean every single one. Day, which we mean when the location is lit as if the pizza plex was fully open and operating. And night, which means when the lights are basically all shut down. And we've seen both of those modes, you know? So just like that, that does indeed confirm that there was a day mode and a night mode in the pizza plex. I know we did see it in the gameplay trailer, but some people were still kind of skeptical, but there you go. Someone brought up the design of the glam rock saying did steel wool or scott make the designs themselves along with the mechanics and such andrew replies with the glam rocks was scott's initial idea we helped with designing and obviously making and implementing them when scott showed us his initial idea we were super excited jason toplowski sorry about that last name butchering the game director and i are both 80s kids which means what is retro for a lot of people would just design elements we grew up with and scott actually replied to this post on the subreddit saying this. To give credit where credit is due, Claudia Schroudner, aka Pinky Pills, drew the initial illustrations designing the look of all the Glamrock animatronics. Pinky Pills actually replied to Scott saying, as I said on Twitter, there wouldn't have been need to credit me. It was an honor doing this. It is my job. A little smiley face. Thank you so much for creating this awesome series. Moving on, someone asked about the AI system. I only have Andrew's response saying, oh, I can't go into our AI system. Our co-founder and lead engineer Stewart would murder me and stuff me into an animatronic suit. Andrew, we would not want that. But we do know as we are exploring the environment, the animatronics will be trying to hunt us down and find us. We've seen that with Roxanne and Montgomery in the gameplay trailers, and uh, also Chica as well when we're in the kitchen. Not sure if you can answer this, but how much of a role do you guys play in writing the game? Or does Scott write everything for you? It is really collaborative, but Scott has final say in everything, and he creates the overall story concept. Where do we have unique ideas we're comfortable pitching them to him and he really is super receptive which really allows us to have a creative voice and actually as i've heard from other people who have worked with scott apparently scott is usually super free and open to you know people doing their own thing with their project so if someone creating a game for example stairwall or one of the you know initiative creators or maybe even a lumix has an idea usually scott's very free and you know open-minded to the suggestion i wanted to ask will dlss help help optimize the game properly when being ported to multiple platforms. Just as a heads up, I got no freaking clue what DLSS is, so <laughs> that's all you tech people out there wondering about this. And actually, this is a response from Richard, not actually uh, Andrew Dayton. I'm guessing Richard is maybe more on the technical side of the game than Andrew is. DLSS for now is only on RTX hardware. It relies on the AI tensor cores of a PC RTX graphics card. Yes, mm, yes, Richard, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. However, the software is evolving in the future we will see. This is a long one. Hey there, big fan of FNAF, and I love what we've seen of Security Breach so far. If it's okay, I'd like to ask a question about the history of Help Wanted. Was there a reason behind switching out the animatronic Spring Bonnie for Malhair slash Glitch Trap in the final game? And will we ever get to have a full look at Spring Bonnie's full model? Andrew surprisingly replied with so many good questions, so many secrets I can't talk about. Yeah, so if you guys didn't know, 
originally Spring Bonnie was going to be in Help Wanted instead of Glitch Trap. I believe he had some asset in the in the game files where he was in front of one of the curtains and also, I mean, probably the most well-known appearance of him was on that scottgames.com teaser which had uh, fan-made, you know, trace-over models from other games. I believe it was Funtime Foxy and then the Spring Bonnie model was also from I think it was Pop Goes Memories? So yeah, Spring Bonnie was supposed to be in the game instead of Glitch Trap, but I guess, I don't know. Steel World does not want to budge about that, about that answer. Out of currently revealed characters, which one has been your favorite to design? Andrew replying with, ooh, that's hard. My personal favorite animatronic is Monty. If he wasn't a giant, potentially murdery animatronic, I would love to play a few rounds of mini golf with him. The wording is interesting here. Right? Potentially not a murderous animatronic. Does that mean at some point in the game he's good instead of trying to hunt us down and kill us? Opinions on the FNAF AR game. If you don't want to answer that, can you answer this? What are some early concepts of the Glamrocks? Sorry, I'm going through a ton of questions. I think what Illumix has done is super fun and a really great way of utilizing AR for entertainment. I got to talk to Kieran, the CEO of Illumix, before the pandemic and she is incredibly passionate about the FNAF universe and has a great team. It's not surprising that Andrew and Kieran have have talked. If you guys don't know, the Glamrocks will be in FNAF AR, hopefully sometime this year, because Kieran revealed in an interview that they, again, are coming to the game, but after the release of Security Breach. Also, you didn't answer the question about the Glamrocks. Off-topic question, but what is your opinion on the memes and content around Security Breach? We have definitely shared some of the funnier memes on our stack channels. We do a little trolling. Hey Andrew, did you see my video? I've made a lot of cool videos. Andrew, have you made sure that you're subscribed to the channel yet? Same thing to all you other people watching, make sure you're subscribed. What was the most difficult Glamrock animatronic to model? I'll ask our lead character artist Rodney and try and get an answer for you. Okay, from our character team, Roxy. Which honestly makes sense when you think about it, it's probably all that hair that she has in the back of her head. I don't know why I said it like that, like it was a bad thing that she had hair. So someone asked about the shots that we saw in the gameplay trailer, because a lot of people were speculating, and as it has been confirmed recently, that it was old gameplay footage, and this is what Andrew had to say. Those shots are a little older, so they don't have final lighting or set dressing. I believe the playground area, there it is, was the least polished of the locations. I'm happy that this was asked, because again, the whole community was like, I don't know about this one, that play area doesn't look all that finished, so I'm happy to know that they are still working on set dressing, because again, that play area looked kind of bland. Moving on to some more technical questions, like frames per second and all that stuff. What's the FPS on PlayStation 4? This is for PS4 specifically. And Andrew says that they are targeting 60, which if I'm being honest, is a little concerning. The fact that they said targeting 60, not actually 60, because that means that it'll probably dip below. And then someone else talked about the RTX lighting and graphics. I see that it doesn't change the game dramatically. I'm glad because I probably wouldn't have been able to play it on my PC, but I should be fine. It looks amazing even without the RTX, you have done a really good job. Thanks for the positive feedback. We're optimizing the game to be compatible for machines without RTX cards as well, so hopefully you won't have a problem playing the game. Smiley face. And that's from Kai, so that is very good to know because a lot of people will not have RTX cards that will be able to handle the lighting and graphics for the game. So that is very, very, very good to hear. And this next response also builds on that, saying despite all the efforts towards implementing RTX GI, will you still work towards making no RTX look as polished as possible? This is also Kai again, absolutely. Just because RTX is an available technology, we know that a lot of people won't have access to RTX cords. We want them to have an excellent experience too. Moving on to some other questions, we have a very interesting one is there an official name for Moondrop's daytime counterpart? Andrew, the big man himself, saying not officially. There you go, boys. He also didn't dismiss the fact that Moondrop is the name of the moon animatronic, so I, I'm taking that as official. As for the sun counterpart, which I, I don't know, is that does that mean that they're the same character or not? Apparently, they don't have a name yet, which is interesting because, I mean, you're pretty far into development. But who knows, maybe the community will come up for a name for them and then that will just be their official name. Kind of like what happened with a what, Glitch Trap and the Freddles and Golden Freddy. What is the difference in scale between Help Wanted versus Security Breach? If Help Wanted was a piece of pepperoni, Security Breach would be the whole pie. A Freddy Fazbear Pizza Plex pie, of course. So that is insane. <laughs> that, like, this game is huge. 
And and Andrew had to say that. That is absolutely insane. This game is gonna be so big, the biggest goddamn game in the franchise, it's gonna be amazing. This is interesting. I had no clue that I wanted to know this, but now I'm so happy that I do know this, you know, piece of FNAF fact. Who came up with the idea of Dreadbear? He looks really cool, so it'd be interesting knowing a bit about how he came to be. It was a creative idea we had at Steel Wool, and we pitched it to Scott. We had a few different names that we pitched before we settled on Dreadbear. So that's interesting. I would assume that they pitched the entirety of the Halloween update, the Halloween DLC to Scott then. And if you didn't know, the original name of the Curse of Dreadbear was the Rise of Frank and Freddy, I believe. Moving on to some more Princess Quest, we have Will Princess Quest remain a mobile exclusive, or will it ever come to other devices in the future? Wasn't Princess Quest some kind of glitch thingy? I swear someone hacked that into the code. I love you staying in character, Andrew but I'm really curious about the answer. I really do enjoy Princess Quest. I think it's a fantastic minigame, and I would love to see it go to other platforms. But unfortunately, Andrew staying in character. Did Scott give you a comprehensive knowledge of the FNAF lore when you started working with him, or does he only tell you what he needs to? If I told you what Scott told us, he would send an army of killer animatronics after us, and ain't nobody want that. Yeah, so we can assume that they know maybe quite a lot about the FNAF lore. What was the hardest thing you worked with while making the game? Was it the human models, the animatronic models, big props, or smaller props? Andrew says the scope. We dream big and Scott was your crazy, go do it. Which is just, it's so good to hear. You know, Scott is so open. He's such a neat and cool, amazing dude. If Andrew's like, yo Scott, I wanna do this very Pogos thing and Scott's like, hey yo, do it, bet you won't. And Andrew's like, Bad. Anyways, that's all the info I have for you today. A very long video. So thank you so much for sticking through the entirety of the video. If you watch to the end, again, I've said this like three times at this point, but make sure you're subscribed. We're getting pretty close to 20k. You know, I think we're at like 17.1k. It would be great to get to 20k. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.